During this project, you're going to learn how to auto-rig a character that you choose in a website called Mixamo. Download that into Cinema 4D and build an animation from it. I hope you enjoy it. So to get started, I'm going to set up the basics of a scene. I'll go up and drop in floor and a physical sky. You can make your scene as complex as you'd like. Now it's time to find some free 3D characters that we can rig to a website called Mixamo. If you do a general search for free 3D models, you'll come across Clara.io, TurboSquid, and Thingiverse. Each of these sites has downloadable models that you'll be able to auto-rig. For Clara.io, you can go into their library. You can do a general search for a specific type of 3D model, their default model categories, or you can just scroll down through the models to suit your liking. Notice at the bottom of the first page it shows that there are over a quarter million pages and a ton of models for you to use. The type of model that we're going to use is going to have to be in a T-pose. A T-pose looks like this. The arms are outstretched, the legs are straight up and down, and the character is basically just standing there. Models like this with the arms touching the sides of the legs or in different types of poses won't work for this rig. So stay away from models like this hedgehog. Models like this Assassin's Creed would work perfect. So I'll click the Assassin's Creed. I can preview my model to see if it looks good to me. When you're ready to download your character, click Download, select FBX, and then click Download Your File. To preview your file, double click to expand, and your FBX will show up on your desktop. Now it's time to go to a website called Mixamo. If you haven't signed up for Mixamo, it's free. All you have to do is include an email, give yourself a password, fill in your first and last name, and you'll be able to use the program. Once you're into Mixamo, click Upload Character and drag your FBX file into this area. Once your character loads into the Auto Rigger, it will preview like this. Click Next. And now we need to place markers on our figure. Uncheck Use Symmetry unless your character is exactly symmetrical. For the chin marker, place it over the chin, drag the wrist markers up to the wrist area, align the elbow markers, the knees, and the groin. If your model is perfectly symmetrical, by clicking the Use Symmetry button, you'll have half the work to do. Once you've accurately arranged the markers, click Next. And in just a couple of minutes, Mixamo will rig your character for you. Once your character is auto-rigged, preview it and make sure everything looks right. If your markers were misplaced, click the back button. If the figure looks good, click next. Click next again and your character will load in the character viewport. Now it's time to assign an animation to it. At this point we can do one of a couple of things. We can decide what we want our character to interact with in the picture plane during our animation in Cinema 4D or we can just choose an animation that interests us and build as we go. Both approaches have their own merit. I'm going to click Animations, and I can choose from any number of animations that are loaded into Mixamo. You can click through multiple pages, or you can do a general search for something that you specifically want, an animation genre, or something specific to your concept. Notice also that some of these animation files have packs. This pack has 12 animations in it. I'd steer clear of those for this project and select an animation that just has one file. For my animation, I'm going to have my character jumping down. So by clicking that animation, it will automatically load into my picture viewer. I can make some adjustments to my jumping down. I can speed it up or slow it down. And I can open up the arm space or close the arm space to my liking. I can also trim my animation or keep the 173 frames. For this animation, I would suggest using as many frames as possible. That will give you a longer animation to work with. The tools in the lower left hand corner of your viewport allow you to see the FBX files by themselves. They allow you to rotate, you can pan, zoom in and out, or reset your camera angle. If you're happy with your animation and you're ready to download it and know how it's going to interact in the picture plane, click download, leave it in FBX, 
with skin and no frame reduction. Click download and save your file to be used in Cinema 4D. And save your file to be used in Cinema 4D. To load your animation into Cinema 4D, drag it directly into the viewport, click OK, and your animation will show up as a new project. Click play and make sure everything looks good to you. If there are issues with the rig, the MTL files, or the mesh, I would suggest downloading another character. Now it's time to drop our character into our scene. Go up to your primitives and select Null. Click on your bottom asset, hold Shift on your keyboard, click on your top asset, and then drag that top asset underneath the Null so you get a down arrow with a box. We've just made all of those assets a child of a Null. We're going to click the minus, click the Null, then go to Edit, Copy, Window, select our scene, edit, paste. When you drop your character into the viewport, scrub through your animation to see the movement. If you don't see anything, go up to your split screen and navigate to where your character is. Mine looks rather large in space and I don't see it within the picture plane, so I can go to a left to right view, scroll out until I see it, and then navigate to place it in my viewport. Another way to bring your object into view is to click on the null and hit O on your keyboard. O will bring the object into the viewport centered. Click the play button and make sure your animation looks good to you. Notice by default 90 frames are showing up in my timeline. To stretch it out to the 182 frames that I have in the animation, I can grab this tab and pull it to the right. Now when I hit play, I can view the entire animation. Remember one of the goals for this project is to have our character interact with something in the picture plane. In this case I'm going to select a cube. When I drop the cube in the viewport it showed up quite small. So I'm going to go up to scale and drag off to the side to scale my cube up. Click play and then I can make adjustments if I need to. I'm going to scrub back to frame zero Go up to split screen, and again I can use any of these views to navigate as I wish. When you're happy with the assets that you've added for the interaction of your character, it's time to add some material to that object or those objects. One resourceful way to add materials is to go to your content browser. Click the tab Content Browser, double click Presets, go down to Visualize, click Materials, and several types of materials will be shown in these folders. For my cube, I'm going to select a stone material. In order to place your material, all you have to do is drag it down into the Materials Manager and then drag it onto your object to place it. I can also drag it up into my Objects Manager on top of my object. At this point, you might want to click Render View just to see how things are rendering. I'm happy with how this looks except for the floor, so I need some material for the floor as well. I'll go back to the content browser, click the up arrow, and find a material that would, that would look good for the ground. Double click ground in this case, and I'll grab some sand. Drag it down to your materials manager, and then drag it onto the floor. Click render preview, and the floor looks much better with that material. I do notice an issue that I have with my character and the light setting that came in from Mixamo. It's cutting up the floor and mixing up the material. So I'm going to go up to my null and I can make an adjustment to that simply by clicking the light preset and hitting delete on my keyboard. Now I'll collapse that null and hit render again. This render is a much more natural look. If you choose to make an adjustment to the sky, you can click physical sky, go down to load sky preset, and you can choose from any of these looks for your sky. Notice that not only did the sky color change, but the lighting changed as well. I'll hit render, and I can get a look at what that sky render will look like. I can also go down to load weather presets, and I can adjust the weather look in that sky preset. I can also adjust the atmosphere, add fog, rainbow, sunbeam, so on and so forth. I would suggest working with these functions 
to see what your physical sky looks like as you click through them. With the adjustments that we just made to the physical sky, this render view may take some time. One quicker way to access a render is to go into that split screen, click on your perspective view, and then click render view. If you're happy with what your scene looks like, it's time to finish the scene up. Go back to your perspective view, we're going to drop a camera into our objects manager. When we click this little white icon here, that turns the camera on. Notice we have yellow dots on either side of our picture viewer, the top and the bottom, and in the middle. That denotes that the camera is active. In order to add movement with a camera, we can drop a keyframe on frame zero, scrub forward a few frames, and then use the navigation tools in the upper right hand corner to move left or right, zoom in or out, orbit, or you can hold option on your keyboard or orbit around that way. Once you're happy with your first movement, click the keyframe and then preview your motion. To add more motion, just scrub forward, move your view in your viewport, drop another keyframe, and then preview your movement. Scrub to the end of your animation and move to where you want to view the scene in the end. Drop one last keyframe and your animation is complete. It's good practice to preview your animation and just note that you can move the spline that's attached to the camera to change its action at any point. You can also move keyframes through time so that your animation takes on those actions during those frames. When you're happy with your work, go up to Render Settings, click Output, select All Frames, click Save, switch from TIFF to MOV. For the render, click Standard and select Physical. Go to Effect, select Ambient Occlusion, back to Effect, and select Global Illumination. Click out of the render settings and let's save our work before we render it. Go to File, Save Project with Assets, and name it. Select where you'd like to keep your file, click Save, and at this point you can either render the animation on a designated render server or you can render the animation in Cinema 4D. To render it in Cinema 4D, click the Render to Picture Viewer icon, click Yes, and your animation will render in the Picture Viewer. In order to save your render when it's finished, click on the top frame, scroll down to the bottom frame, hold shift on your keyboard, click the bottom frame, go up to file, save as, and switch from still image to animation. For format, select MOV, click OK, give your animation a title and a designation to be saved, click save and then open your animation to preview it. In order to finalize our animation, we're going to use iMovie. So click iMovie in the dock, click Create New, select Movie, drag your animation directly into iMovie, and at this point we can start editing. The first thing we're going to add is a title, so click Titles, and you can preview how the titles will look just by scrubbing through them. Select a title by double clicking and you can either shorten the duration of the title or extend it. You can also take the title and drag it to the front of your animation so that it only previews in the beginning of the animation. In order to adjust the text, click on the title section, highlight the text and type in the desired text. Hit enter on your keyboard and then you can preview your animation. In this case my title was showing for, for too short of a time so I'm going to go ahead and drag it out for a few more seconds. I'd also like to add some sound effects so I'll go up to audio, select sound effects, and since my animation is roughly six seconds, I need at least six seconds of sound, or I can add other sound effects if it makes sense for my animation. You can preview sound effects just by clicking the little play button next to them. When you find a sound that you like, just drag it down into your timeline. You can decide where to place the sound in your animation, and then add other sound effects to your choosing and then drag those other sounds into your timeline as well. Preview by scrubbing to the beginning of your animation, clicking, and then hitting play. In my case, I'm not happy with how the character lands and where his hand placement is. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop my video down a bit. To crop it, I'll go up to the Crop tool, 
I'm going to click Ken Burns. And for ending, I'm going to end my animation above his hands. Hit return on the keyboard and then preview my work. When I'm happy with my adjustment, it's time to save our work. Go to File, Share, and select File. Switch from faster to better quality, Pro Resolution, click Next, give your animation a name, and click Save to save your file. Pay attention to the progress wheel on the upper right hand side of the application. This shows the activity as it's being exported. When the share is exported, you'll get a prompt and then preview your file. 